Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back with another video about my, well, current quest to learn how to actually be an official, totally legit pilot rather than just a person that messes around in video games. Yeah, I want to talk about the flight sim setup that I've been using and how it's actually helping me. Basically, yeah, this whole private pilot thing started when I got a SciTech yoke system for Christmas that's like a pilot yoke, and, well, it was garbage. <laughs> Since then, I've stopped using the yoke part. I still use the throttle and I still use the pedals, but the yoke now just sits out here, doesn't do anything, right? I have a SciTech panel with switches on it, another panel with a radio uh, display, radio setup, and I have a little side stick here and a couple of displays here that are running uh, apps that will simulate a glass cockpit. So I want to talk you through all this, show you what I've got and how it works, and I'm going to do it from a first-person point of view, view using this uh, very nice little uh, GoPro camera on my head, and it's going to look a little, you know, nerdy. Apparently all the cool kids are wearing these these days. So here we are. You can see I've got my feet on the pedals. I've tightened those up as tight as they will go, not very tight. We've got the throttle quadrant, you have a radio panel, switches, and these switches map to re just sort of generic planes. Most of these switches are mapped differently for the Cirrus that I fly. The Cirrus doesn't even have landing gear, but it has this nice big gear switch. You know what I use that for? I use that for deploying the emergency parachute, which is why I have a little thing wedged in here, so that I have to pull that out if I'm going to deploy the parachute. On the left, I have this Logitech 3D X Pro, Extreme 3D Pro, which, you know, I, if you look down in the bottom you know, left of the screen, that's what the Cirrus flies with. It's, it's a left stick. I should probably put this at 45 degrees to make it a little more natural, but it works for me right now. Anyway, let's actually go through a startup. So the switch panel has the important things. I can do battery two. Then battery one, yes, those are in the correct order. If I'm going to start the engine, I should turn on the strobes to warn people that I'm here. Turn the fuel pump on. And with the fuel pump on, if it's a cold start, you're supposed to advance the throttle and the uh, you know fuel mixture or the mixture to make sure there's fuel in the engine. And then you crank it using the ignition, right? And then as it catches, you bring this up and boom, you have a running engine. Now with a running engine, the next thing you do is turn on your alternators and bring on your avionics. And now my panel is alive and I can start doing all the important stuff. Let's turn the fuel off and listen to the weather report. So I'm tuned here on frequency two to 120.67. And if you look up here, 120.67 is the the AWOS frequency. That's the automatic weather something system. <laughs> automatic weather observation system. Uh, and it's always telling me my weather you know, stuff. And it's the wind is at like at 300, which is great because I like runway 31. Uh, this is my regular frequency here for talking to all other pilots and so you can you know use these to adjust and if you need to adjust the nav aids you can do it with this as well so this is a really good panel to have so anyway I also 3d printed my own throttle quadrant uh, or throttle head that feels a lot more like the real thing so let's actually taxi for takeoff so before I do that first thing I'm gonna need to do is make a radio call and I would do that by pulling the trigger because you know, that's where the push to talk button is on a service. So a radio call would typically be uh, NOS traffic service 338 Delta Kilo at the ramp, ready to taxi to uh, taxiing to runway 31 NOS. Okay, that's good. Take the brakes off because that's my brakes and start taxiing. Yay, look at this. We'll follow this. I'm going to go extra fast. So. This uh, is running on X-Plane 11. X-Plane 12 is apparently like this close to entering early access. And I expect great things from it. First of all, it will actually have a proper version of a Cirrus, although it is a Cirrus SR22, which is the slightly bigger and more awesome version. The SR20 is the smaller, less capable version, but it is used as a trainer. So uh, this... Uh, this uh, airport though, this is a free model that was on the forums and it is 
really, really good. It has all the stuff there that I would need. The only thing that I find missing from this rendition of Nos Field near Novato is there are a set of four antenna that sit on the downwind that, yo, know, I kind of think they're important. I need to somehow add them into it. So normally you would do a run up here and if you're doing this properly, you should you can actually go in and do checklists here, right? So there's checklists on the on the computer that you're actually supposed to follow through. I want to get them in here, but the problem is these are checklists for different systems, different uh, planes, and you need to pay extra and actually map them in. So these are the semionic panels. And they have virtual controls here on the side. Sorry, this is a regular screen. So if I want to adjust my barometer, I can do that. Uh, and I can use the touch screen on this side. Uh, but yeah, if you want to actually give them parameters that match real aircraft, then you have to pay a little bit extra. If you want to have physical bezels, they will sell you them. They are about $1,600 per bezel, which is kind of crazy. The iPads I can get for like a few hundred dollars. Anyway, let's go and take off here. So prior to takeoff, what do we do? Well, we bring our flaps down to 50%. Uh, let's actually come out of this. Uh, oh, let's put my window back, uh, back here. There you go. I've obviously, I've obviously moved to a trackball because having a keyboard and mouse out on the desk, very complicated. Uh, we ha so we got that down. We're gonna bring our fuel pump on, turn our landing lights on so everyone can see us. We've got ourselves trimmed in, uh, mostly, there we go, center trim, and we're going to make a radio call on 123.07. NOS traffic, SIRS 338 Delta Kilo, taking runway 31 for departure to the north. NOS. Bang, there we go, and let's try and get on there. My nose wheel's a little wild here, but that's no problem. So we'll just roll onto the center of the runway here. I'm just doing this rather more quickly than I'd like. Uh, I would normally bring the engine page up, but it doesn't actually work on this. Throttle slowly to 100%. There we go. Keep in the deflection off the rudder. There we go. I almost didn't get 100% there. Airspeed is alive. We're up to about 50 knots there. And there we go. 60. And rotation speed is coming up. Very gently lift this back and get ourselves into the air. Now, initially, we're going to climb at about 85. 85 is sort of speed for the initial climb out, and I should know that there's a mountain straight ahead of me. So normally, you would make a little bit of a turn to the, the east just to make sure you're not flying straight into that mountain. You'll also hit some dirty air. Now that I'm about 300 feet, bring in those flaps, and you'll lose a bit of vertical speed there as those flaps go out. But yeah, I'm just going to depart straight out on this here. So the things that I want to do to upgrade this, uh, this toggle switch, currently that is my uh, flaps. I want to have a physical flap control. These three buttons here control my uh, fuel selector, which is like a big chunky physical valve that lets you select which tank your fuel is coming from. I want to 3D print something and Arduino something awesome. Uh, I want to build a radio panel with a few more buttons on it because, uh, you know, this is missing stuff for selecting different, uh, you know, different radio channels and whatnot. But this is pretty good. Okay. And so now, look, we're above a thousand feet. We're on our climb out. I can pitch the nose down. And uh, yeah, you know, technically I could turn off my landing lights now, could maybe pitch down, turn off my fuel pump. Everything's here. If I wanted to deploy the parachute, it's there. If I did something ridiculously stupid that needed it, that would be possible. And yeah, this has a, been a fine system. So the way I use this is basically to go over a lot of my entry and exit procedures for any airport that I'm going to be flying to. So uh, for example, we talked about going to Ukiah and I went and flew it and I knew when I was coming up the middle you know, what the, uh, the valley, I could tell exactly where it was. And it's like, I know it's that little yellow patch at the bottom of the mountain. And sure enough, it was right. So it really helps with the situational awareness. It helps figure out the traffic pattern and what you're going to encounter. And because you can have this thing randomly throw emergencies at you, 
And now at this point, I began to simulate what would happen in an emergency. And then I remembered I actually had a, a simulated emergency live on Twitch. And this is the recording of that. And so wait a second, I'm supposed to fly at 1800 feet. That means that if this is a traffic pattern, I should probably be turning about... No oh no! Engine fire! What's going to happen? Uh oh, that's not good. Uh, engine fire. What do I do? What do I do? Well, what you do is you cut fixture to the engine. But the problem is that now i got to remain low. I'm going to turn off my fuel source. Keep my nose down. Uh, try to keep my speed here. I want to try and hit like 90 knots because that's best glide. Uh, this is not a good plane for gliding. Ah, uh, shit. Shit, 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 shit. Okay, that looks like I can't quite get through there. But there's a there's a road here. There we go. Still moving, still moving. Let's bring the no we bring this down. I could have totally made it over those build those buildings, but Yay! Okay. Not bad! But look, no matter how good the simulator is, there's still going to be a lot of shortcomings in terms of not actually having to worry about your life. But one thing it's great at is if you work with other people, you can actually practice your air traffic control. I do this on Pilot Edge. Santa Maria Tower, Cirrus 338 Delta Kilo, approximately 10 miles to the north, inbound for landing with information Sierra. Runway 3, correction, November 338 Delta Kilo, report midfield, right downwind, runway 30. Report midfield, downwind, runway 30, 338 Delta Kilo. Uh, this is 338 Delta Kilo reporting midfield, runway 30, Santa Maria. 338 Delta Kilo, I believe the instruction was reported uh, midfield right downwind, appears you're on the south side still, which is the left downwind. So yeah, uh, making embarrassing mistakes on Pilot Edge when it's not going to matter as much. And while that's stressful, uh, one of the most fun things I did this year was on Pilot Edge. It was SimVenture, a simulated version of Oshkosh. And just to put this in perspective, sure, everyone in Microsoft Flight Sim was flying down canyons and F-18s and sure, I decided to fly down city streets, but that was not nearly as thrilling as trying to negotiate my way into uh, Oshkosh. And the organizers of SimVenture get the real controllers from AirVenture to come in, and it is uh, pretty amazing. All right, looks like I've got several up high and several down low. We're going to try to peel you guys apart as you get close. One mile from Fisk, up high, uh, S uh, uh, Merlin Vision Jet. Vision Jet, what are you doing over here? Rock your wings for me. Also down low, a Cirrus. Rock your wings. It's the orange and white Cirrus. Orange and white Cirrus. Rock your wings. Let me see the orange and white one. Nope, that's the green and white one. I want the orange and white one to rock. There you go. Orange and white. You're going to runway 1A right. You're going to make that slow right turn. Green and white up top. You're going to 27. Vision jet. Going to 27. Follow the railroad tracks. Vision jet. Come down to 1,800. Monitor the tower 118.5. Cirrus up high. Up high, 1,800, monitor the tower, 118.5. Orange and white Cessna, orange and white Cessna, I want you to make that right turn to join Fisk Avenue. Legacy up high, 2,300, rock your wings for me, half mile from Fisk, long easy maybe. Long easy, rock your wings for me. I made multiple landings that weekend and they were all very entertaining, but uh, I think my finest or worst moment was this one where I was desperately trying to get into line before they closed the session and that meant I had to slow down. And I thought I would slow down by deploying my flaps, and unfortunately I deployed my flaps at about 151 knots. And on a G6 Cirrus, the flap deployment speed is 150 knots. This is not a G6, this is a simulation of an older one, so I lost my left flat. I, I was like almost going to deploy the parachute, but I managed to bring the plane back under control. So. I decided at that point that I was going to continue this wild ride. Yet because I'd lost my flap on the left side, the plane wanted to roll to the left due to the lack of lift. 
And to make things worse, I was supposed to be flying at about 90 knots, which is a little slow when you're missing big chunks of your wing. So, <laughs> so it was just constant babying of this thing. But then well, the next problem was that to acknowledge certain transmissions, instead of talking on the radio, you're supposed to rock your wings. And when you're missing wing surface, yeah, I, I almost departed controlled flight at that point, but thankfully managed to keep it airborne and uh, began to turn it in for the landing. I kind of overcooked things a little. But yeah, in the end, I wasn't proud of the fact that I'd managed to uh, lose chunks of my plane, but I was kind of pretty proud of the fact that I was able to continue flying it after that. Anyway, yeah, those skills I've learned talking to the ground, I, they have actually been useful in real life. Of course, the real thing that I'm just working on right now in real life is is landing and just controlling the plane at low speeds. This was a, the worst landing I've ever made. <laughs> and, and in my defense, it started out intentionally high so that we could try slipping it. And I'd never really had much experience in slipping planes. That's where you basically try to put the plane side on to increase the amount of drag and make it sink fast. So anyway, after all that, I end up sort of coming down relatively steep towards the runway because, uh, you know, you're, I'm still a little high. And with basically no power, you'll see that there's basically no throttle. I put a tiny amount of throttle in at the end just to give myself some pitch authority. And there's a bit of bouncing. In fact, there was enough bouncing that we were... I was beginning to push the throttle forward for a go around and then I felt it settle and so I stuck with it but yeah it was pretty close to being a go around rather than a landing. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.